All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, a wonderful afternoon or day to you, wherever you're watching us from. You're welcome to the third, the fourth day of our metamorphosized program. If you've been with us from Monday, you, I'm sure you've been blessed. We've talked about several topics, you know, um, discussed how we as young women uh, can grow, which is as the essential of the theme metamorphosize, which talks about growth, talks about being transformed, talks about being better human beings. And we have been looking at topics that concern us as young women that are crucial to our development and our growth and being better people. And so today you are welcome. Today our guest for today is um, a very wonderful person. I'm sure a lot of us have seen the flyers and we're expectant. Um, it's going to be wonderful, trust me. Uh, she's an admirable person and just shortly I will be reading her profile. Um, and then she will start. She's already right here in the studio waiting for us. Uh, so once, just in a few minutes, just about three minutes, um, she will be coming in. Uh, in order not to take much more time because um, of the profile, I'm going to read, I'm going to take us in the opening prayer and then read her profile and welcome her into the studio. So wherever you are, get your pens ready, get your jotters ready. We're about to be mightily blessed right now. Um, if you are where you are, please bow your ears as we pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you. We're very grateful to you because this is another day that you have made. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity. We thank you for your thoughts and your plans towards in our lives and the things that you're doing with us every day. We're very, very grateful to you. We say, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Dear God, this is another moment of learning for us, another moment of sharing ideas, another moment of growing for us. We start with you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. Therefore, we begin with you. We ask that everything that will be done in the next um, 50 to one hour that you will be with us in the name of Jesus. Precious Holy Spirit, we ask that you take charge, that you give uh, our, our guest, our speaker, words to speak towards us, that you will cause our lives to be changed, you know, permanently and practically in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end, let us come back come out better people, let us come out re-energized, let us come out rejuvenated in the mighty name of Jesus. We return all glory to your holy name. Thank you, God, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So I'm just going to be reading the profile of our guest. Um, she's already here, like I said earlier, and uh, just in about one minute, I'll be inviting her into the studio. So um, our guest, her name is Mrs. Tixi Lopoya Adeboe. She's a Christian, first of all. She's a minister in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and she is the vice president in charge of special duties for the Pastor Seed R uh, family, RCCG. She attended the Redeemers University where she obtained her BSc in mass communication, and that was in 2009. She then proceeded to Loughborough University in the United Kingdom in 2011, where she obtained her MSc in marketing and management. Over the years, her interest and love for cooking grew. And so in 2015, she started Mimi's, a food lounge. I'm sure 90% of all of us watching have been to Mimi's in either our camp or in any of the other branches in Lagos and Nibadan. Um, Sorry, I just had to uh, say that. A food lounge, which she started with just two staffs. And then the company has expanded from just making cakes to other meals like local and intercontinental meals, pastries and desserts. She currently has three branches of Mimi's in Nigeria, one in Lagos, Ogun and Oshun State, and she employs over 30 people. Um, all was achieved by the grace of God before she was 30 years of age. That is very admirable. She's passionate about helping other people become what God wants them to be. She's the founder of Women of Prayer and Praise, WOPP, that's WOP, a, a gathering where women pray and sharpen one another towards fulfillment of destiny. 
she loves traveling and to experience other cultures and places. She also loves cooking, of course, and she's happily married to Lekke Adeboye, and they're blessed with three wonderful children. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, put your hands together. Let us welcome Mrs. Titi Lekwe Adeboye. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, Thank you. Evening. Thank you for having me. No, can you hear me though? For, yes, I can hear you. Thank you okay. for, for for being a part of this. I know you're very busy. I mean, I saw a poster where you were supposed to speak and I was just hoping that it's not today because I can imagine how, how busy you are. And we really appreciate you of the fact that despite your schedule, you have made it here. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a blessing to be here. Thank you to everyone listening. Um, I pray that the almighty God will bless all of us together today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'm just going to leave you to uh, go ahead with your uh, with your talk, and then by uh, in about thirty minutes, I'll come back. I'll be in the back end of the studio, and then we'll begin to ask questions. Thank okay. You. All right, that's fine then. Okay. Thank you once again, everyone listening. Come. Um, I know we've prayed, but I just want to say a short prayer. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you for what we're about to listen today to today. We ask, oh God, that you teach us yourself. You help us to be better people, better women, better men, if there are any men listening, that, Lord, our lives will glorify you at all times. Thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Okay. Uh, again, I want to thank the LSE sisters for the opportunity to be here, to be able to take this topic today. Uh, my topic is finance being misindependence. So I'm, I'm going to be talking about being misindependence, but with a lot of focus on finance. Now, um, don't worry, whatever I'll be sharing are things that you'll be able to relate with. It would, it, you know, I'm not going to give any complicated terminologies or make it complicated and you just be more confused after the session. No, I pray that God will give you understanding and help you to um, operate better in, your, in the area of finance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, one second. Okay, so first of all, I'll read 3 John 2. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I pray that you prosper in all things and in health just as your soul prospers. So really, financial prosperity is key in our lives, it's key for everybody. So also is um, spiritual prosperity. God is interested in us growing in all aspects of our lives, not just even our finance, but in all aspects of our lives, he's interested in it. And um, it is very important. When you talk about the issue of money, money, even though people call it the root of evil, or <laughs> the root of evil, but it is key to your survival. It is, uh, you know, as children of God, I, and as women, I, I particularly support women in, in pursuing careers, in, in getting more for themselves. So let, let's just move ahead. So when we talk about financial independence, what does it mean? Independent, independence itself has been defined as freedom to organize your own life, to make your own decision without needing the help of other people. Well, I would just say, since it's in the area of finance, I would say that uh, independence is freedom from poverty when when you are independent in the area of finance you have power to do a lot of things now let's go let's go further into the teaching when we talk about financial independence is the ability to make decisions decisions and live your life free from control or influence of other people now i would stick with the ability to make financial decisions because I don't necessarily think that um, you would freedom from control of other people. It might come in at different times in your life. For example, I am a married woman and even though I make money for myself, there are still times that I still consult my husband on, on um, things that I want to do for myself. 
or for my company because maybe I want his advice, you know, I need his thoughts, I need his blessings. It goes a long way. So it financial independence to me doesn't necessarily mean that you're out of control and nobody else can talk to you and you're just, you know, you're above everybody else. But it just means that you have a level of, of, um, of um, will of use for money. You know, you can control what you buy, what you don't, because you have it. That is how I see it. Now, and I agree and I support that every woman should have a very high level of financial independence. It's very important. So it's it's definitely um, financial independence is used to describe uh, the state of having sufficient personal wealth, sufficient personal wealth to live without having to work round the clock you know you can control your time you can control what you do what you don't when you have financial uh, independence and then but even beyond financial independence what i want to talk about is financial freedom when we talk about financial freedom it is when you actually you your life is how would i put it you have so much that you don't really have to stress in your life so, and you can plan it in a way that you have financial freedom. You don't have to um, struggle about maybe the next 10 years because certain measures that you have put in place now or that you're going to put in place after this session will help you to be a better person and you're on your way to financial freedom. Amen. So when you have um, leftover money, income to cover your living expenses, I mean, just imagine if you can decide to... to um, you have the not even the decision. You have the finances to be able to travel to anywhere in the world, or to be able to buy properties, or to be able to you know support the work of God anywhere around the world. Wouldn't that be nice? That would really be nice, wouldn't it? So that is what we are after. That is that is what God wants for us. God's plans for us is, doesn't include poverty. So I don't know if I, I believe there's nobody here that believes that a Christian should be poor. <laughs> and I hope that that mindset will change after this session in Jesus' name. So, um, so when we talk about financial independence, it's not necessarily saying you are self-made because I don't believe that anybody is self-made. Everybody in this world that is something has had a contribution from somebody else to make them or get them to where they are currently. Nobody is self-made. As Christians, we know that God has given us the grace to be everything and anything we are. If we don't have life, there's nothing like financial independence. There's nothing like that to a dead person. So we, we're not after like, you know, self-made, being self-made, but we're just saying that we want to attain and get everything that God has planned for us as his daughters. You know, it doesn't mean that um, you, you have pride or or that you know because you have that money you you waste it and all of that now i want to quickly consider i'm not going to read because of our time matthew 25 from verse 14 to 30 for those familiar with that passage is the parable of the talent so um there was a master that was traveling and he gave one servant five talents another two and he gave another one one he gave one a talent and we were told here that the one with five multiplied it, the one with two multiplied it, but the one with one didn't do anything with it. And because of that, he was punished. God wants us to multiply in wealth. He wants us to get to height when it comes to our finances. He doesn't want us to be stagnant. If the ta Imagine if the, the servant with one talent spent that money, there will be nothing left for him, for him. He will be dependent on other people. And that is not what God wants. And he suffered for thinking that way, that he had to be dependent, that, he, you know, he didn't, he shouldn't have funds or he shouldn't have wealth. So whatever it is, let your life always have value. Over a period of time, your life must have value continuously. It must continuously have value. Our, you know, the gifts that God has given to you must not be wasted. It must be used to profit. And I hope that God will help all of us to be able to profit with everything that he has given to us. So I want you to ask yourself and just think, if you are a profitable servant, how profitable are you now? Remember I said that it's not just about money. How profitable are you for the kingdom of God? How profitable are you in your relationships? How profitable are you in your workplace? 
how profitable are you to your parents? How profitable are you, is your friendship to somebody else? Mm -hmm. It's not just about having the money. It's also about other things that God has called us to be. So, and I want us to be aware and, you know, and um, in tune with that. Also, when we look at the, the same Matthew, there are two parables in that Matthew that I really love. The first one is actually, I, I gave the one of the talents. I'm going to also give the parable of the 10 virgins. Now, that's also in Matthew 25, but, but, but verse 1 to 13. Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13. So we see that in that parable, five of the virgins missed out because they didn't have extra oil. What does that say? That God wants us to operate in a level of wisdom that will, that will give us extra. It's not just about going to church or joining the workforce. For God's sake, this guy, these ladies were virgins. So if you are looking at the highest level of purity, they were there. But it's not just about what you what you um, what you give. God has extra to give you. How how what level of wisdom are you operating in? So we must make always have extra. We must always make extra impact, extra impact. Go extra mile in tasks that you've been assigned to. You must be able to think. You must be able to pray. Now, one thing that that amazes me about that story of the of the talents is that. You know, they, I feel that they should have even put off their lamps since they didn't have extra oil and just use the reflection of the ones that had extra oil. But they didn't, they didn't put off the lamp. They didn't have extra oil. It was just a level of foolishness, to be honest. And we cannot afford to be like that as children of God. So um, if you want to be comfortable in life, you must have extra you must have extra, you must have options, you must save, you must go the extra mile, okay, if you want to be comfortable, and I'm not talking about just money, remember I, just, I said I'm not just talking about money, it's in different aspects of our life, we must be wise, we must be wise women, we must be wise ladies, you must have extra, think about things that sit down and reflect on on things that god has laid in your mind and how you can work with that nobody will hand you anything nobody will hand you anything in fact even if you have someone that will hand you something it's better to to live as if nobody will hand you anything that way you make more that's just the honest truth truth you must go out and prayerfully take what god has planned for you okay and you need the wisdom of God to do that. Don't be like the foolish virgins that didn't have oil, yet they left their labs running. So they completely ran out of oil and they became dependent. They became dependent on the others. And we see in that Matthew, I'll read 6 to 8, and it says, At midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. <laughs> I didn't even want to say that. I know <laughs> I'm not giving you anything. I'm not handing anything to you. You go get your own oil. And that is how life is. If you don't get your oil, you might be disappointed. Even if someone has promised you oil, something might happen to that person that will not make the person able to fulfill their promise. So don't rely on, on getting handouts from other people. Go out and get to work. Do what God has placed in your heart. You see that the story of the woman in Proverbs 31 also was a woman that was financially dependent. If she wasn't financially dependent, uh, independent rather, she wouldn't have been able to do all those things that God has placed had placed in her hands and, and had placed on her heart. Oh, what she was able to do for her children, her husband, her handmaidens, other people. She wouldn't have been able to do that because she wouldn't have the means to do it. Now, let us look at um, some of the ways by which, because of our time, I mean, uh, we just quickly look at some of the ways by which we can become financially independent. And the first thing that comes to mind as I was praying about this topic is that you should have a goal for your life. Have a goal for your life. So many people are just free falling. You're just going as the day, you know, you're just carrying on as the day goes by. Something needs to propel you. Set financial 
goals, set health goals, set um, career goals. Don't just even think about it. Write it down. You need to set goals for yourself. I remember when I started Mimi's and I, I, I thought to myself, I said, it will be before I'm 30, I need to have had at least two other branches of this company. I didn't even know how it was going to happen with my two staff. I didn't know how it was going to happen considering that I had young children to care for. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I was really determined that this is something I would do. I wrote it down. And every time I look at it year in, year out, it's, you know, it, it, it makes me just keep moving, keep working towards that goal. And that is just on my company. There are different goals I've set for myself. If you don't set goals for yourself, you might not achieve anything. Also, once you have set those goals, you need to get to work. Start doing something. Uh, honestly, I am not a believer that of women not being able to work for one reason or the other. I, it, it just doesn't sit with me. I'm so sorry. I believe that every woman has as much opportunities as every man, as, a, as much as op opportunities that God has given to them. There is nothing stopping you. You are probably the one stopping yourself or you're just not planning properly to make those things come to realization. So you need to get to work. Whether you work for yourself, whether you work for other people, whether you work with other people, just get to work. If you do nothing, God will bless nothing. If you do nothing, God will bless nothing. You can talk about financial independence from now to forever. If you don't take any action, you don't make any move, you are not getting anything. So whatever it is, get to work. Be doing something. Um, for those that are married, Marriage is not poverty elevation plan. Get to work. Get to work. Stop using. I always say that to women when I get the opportunity to stop using your marriage, stop using your children as an excuse not to do anything. People work from different places now. You can work from home. You can work around your home. You can work for other people. There's always something to be done. So get to work. Then when you are doing your work, whatever it is you have decided to do, to become that, to get to that level of financial freedom that God has for you, you need to do your work with diligence. You need to do your work with diligence such that people will not be able to fault your work. It is very important. For those that are working for other people, maybe in a paid employment, you know that it is, you get, you don't get promoted for just being lazy, for coming to work, um, say you, you're supposed to work four times a week, you show up only once. You don't get to work for that. In fact, that can get you fired. You get to work when you put a lot of diligence into what you do. Same for business. If you deliver well, that's when you get referrals. That's when you get a lot of people patronizing you. You need to do your work with diligence. And to be honest, for women, because I employ, I think maybe about 70% of my staff would be women both in management and also the um, service staff. But I've noticed that sometimes women, we tend to have a lot of excuses. Uh, my this one, my that one. You know, it can get really, put yourself together. I know life happens. I am a woman myself. Life happens. But, you know, there's a way to always manage those um, things that will creep up one time or the other in our lives. Get to work. Do your work well. Also, for you to become independent financially, you need to understand that there's nothing you have that God has not given to you. Especially for us Christians, that is a very fundamental principle. There's nothing you have that God has. What is going to be making you raise your nose and become proud? You need to be humble. Understand that everything you are has been given by God. So when they say you should tithe, you're not like uh, one pastor wants to collect your money, this one, that one. That's a, it's a way of securing your wealth. And you see, when it comes to this area of what to give God and not, I just always pray that God himself will give you a personal encounter. When you have had a personal encounter with God on certain things, there's nothing anybody, that can, there's nothing anybody can tell you that will move you. If you, you that you had nothing, God raised you up and multiplied you and you know it was because of tithing. Let anybody come and tell you otherwise, you wouldn't believe it. So you need to 
understand that God is the one that gives you the grace to be anything that you are. Okay. Then I would say that you plan in advance. You plan your expenses in advance. You prepare for emergencies. You budget. Don't spend anyhow. Some women cannot help it. You must shop every, every day. Every day. Why? What are you buying? Plan in advance. There are months that you might not get anything for yourself. There are months you might. It helps you to save. Plan in advance. It's, it's necessary to also have a budget. Say you collect a certain amount of money. It's not everything that you should use. You should spend. Please. Be honest in your transactions. Protect your reputation. Be honest. Be honest. It goes a long way. You don't know who is watching. You don't know who is seeing you. So be honest. And committed to what you do. Be committed to what you do. Some people are so lazy that is that laziness. It's not even because there's nothing to do or you know it's, there's no way to do it. It's just that the laziness has so held you. You can sleep. <laughs> you can sleep for God knows how many hours in a day. You can procrastinate. If you procrastinate with your time, your wealth will also be procrastinated. That's just the honest truth. If you are supposed to be working at a certain time, you're not doing it. Um, you will still come back to do that work. It's just that you wasted time doing it. So what you should have made before, added to what you should make while working now, you're not even made. You've not even made any of it. So your wealth will be procrastinated when you procrastinate. So if you procrastinate, I do hope that after this session, you will change your mind and stop doing that. Then it's important that you differentiate between your needs and your wants. This part is crucial. Now, my needs are the things I need to survive. Food, um, somewhere to lay my head. Um, now, the want or need there could be that I might have to rent instead of buying or I might have to buy instead of renting, depending on what my, my, my ratio of, um, of wealth is. Do you understand me? You know, so some things are not really important. You can actually do without them for now. So those are wants. You can afford it. Even sometimes you can even afford it. But you just decide that, no, I would rather do something much important with this fund. Maybe save it, maybe invest it, than just go and buy this stuff. It's a want. You need to be able to differentiate between that. So food food is a, is a need, but going out to eat is a want. Do you understand me? So I need food. I can choose to make it at home, prepare it. Or if I have, you know, um, the extra fund, going out is an option. It might be a want. If I know that I don't have enough money, then the wise thing would be maybe to prep it myself or something, save a bit of money doing that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So please, we need to be able to understand that. It helps us to put things in perspective. It helps us to eliminate what the things are not important currently. Even in business, as a business person, it's not all my assets that are um essential that are needed at that time it's not all my assets that i can purchase i need to differentiate what is absolutely necessary from what can wait till later it's important then you must learn to save if you want to be financially free you must learn to save you must learn to save save your money don't spend all your salary don't spend all your gifts don't spend all your investments Save some. And then I'll take it a step further from saving into investing. You know, when you save your money, sometimes um, it's just that you don't touch it. You know that this is for a certain um, thing. So it might not necessarily yield anything back. But when you talk about investment, investment yields money. Investment yields money. And I always encourage me, investments are good. I know some people have been burnt. Maybe you didn't inquire from God properly when you jumped into a certain thing in your life and it didn't work out well. But it doesn't mean that investments are bad. Ask God to direct you and even speak to people that are knowledgeable about that area you want to invest in. I am totally up for investments. 
because some people that work nine to five or that have very small businesses and stuff like that, those things might not be able to sustain you. And if you're looking for financial independence, I mean, it's, it, it's just wouldn't cut it. So please make it a, a serious habit to invest. You can save some money to invest. Do you understand me? You can, I mean, but I believe that beyond saving, every woman should be looking at investing. Find areas that appeal to you, areas that are of interest to you. Seek information about those fields, about those areas, and then put your money there. There's so many things happening now from farming, companies that offer, um, um, what do you call it? that offer investments in farming, um, in technology, in digital marketing, in all sorts, deliveries. So make inquiries, find which one suits you, put money in it. It may not be a lot, but you, something is yielding, something is coming out of it. But before you set out, please pray about it. Please pray about it. Also, I would say you should invest in yourself. Invest in yourself have multiple streams of income and to do that you need to be knowledgeable sometimes your nine to five might not cut it sometimes your business might not cut it but you need to know about other things know about other things do research spend your time and effort in in doing other things that might not even necessarily be be um be related to the field you are in now it might even be related but just do other things. Sometimes you might find that you would just uh, diversify the single stream of income that you have. What do I mean by that? Say I sell soap. I sell soap only in Ikorodu. It would be ideal that after a while, I begin to expand my soap selling to other areas, not just Ikorodu. Even though it's still just that same one soap, that I mean, one group of item or one uh, I wouldn't know what to call it. One uh, type of item that I'm selling, but I've expanded my scope of operation. So you need to be looking at diversifying that single stream to have multiple um, locations or to have multiple parts. Sometimes it might be soap and then you do like a body wash, you do like a, gradually you do like maybe a, a, a bath oil, uh, you know, creams and all of that. So you need to diversify. You need to diversify. It's very important. And invest in yourself in to know more about that thing. There's always different ways and other ways of doing things. Can you find that out and can you begin to do it? Hmm? Then lastly, because of my time, my last point would be, actually maybe second to last point, would be that you will be a doer. Be a doer. See, I know that some of you have heard what I'm saying. You've heard it before. Some of us have heard it multiple times, but you are not taking action. So it's making no difference in your life. It's doing nothing for you. Be a doer. Don't just be someone that will attend um, conferences about finance or about something and not do anything with that information. Be a doer. Commit yourself to building something, to building yourself, to build your self-confidence. Believe in yourself. You can do it. If you're here and you're not doing something that you know you should be or God has laid in your heart because of fear, then do away with that fear. Do away with that fear. God is with you. Believe in yourself. If nobody is motivating you, motivate yourself. There are times in business that I have... I have literally almost thrown in the towel. I'm like, oh God, who sent me? Who sent me? Let me just do something much simpler. This is hard. And, you know, I just, after my rant, I pick up and I just continue. <laughs> okay, done. Let, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. I'm always looking for ways to try and diversify and make things better, do things differently. And I believe everybody can do that. There's always different ways that you can do that one thing that you're doing. And I pray that God will give us wisdom and open our eyes to see those ways in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, lastly, I will say you help other people. There's a joy that comes with helping other people grow. I don't know about you. With helping other, seeing other people succeed, seeing other people fulfill what God has called them to be. Help other people. If you're going to pull others along with you, 
Not because I know people say, uh, because you don't know where you'll be tomorrow or because you might come down or, and that person will help you. Even forget that. But help someone because that is, it feels good. I'm telling you, it feels good to, to assist somebody else, be of help to other people. Let it be of joy to you that someone else is rising up. And besides, when you, if you are making it and someone else is making it, it makes life easier. If you are making it, somebody is not making it, they are constantly asking you, then your own wealth is even going down if you don't know. But if that person is also making it, then you both have wealth. Do you understand what I mean? So please help other people. If um, I think I wanted to read a Bible passage, but um, we'll just leave that out. And I do pray that, okay, so let's just look at Proverbs 10, 22. Proverbs uh, 10, 22. And it says, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. The blessings of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. God's plans for you is to give you wealth. I have heard and I know of people that they didn't even struggle. I mean, they yielded. I mean, there was a lot of work to put into it. I'm not saying that you won't put work into what you're doing. You will put a lot of effort into it. But it won't end up in vain. It won't end up for nothing. That is what that means. So please um, understand today that being misindependent doesn't mean that you become approachable. You become sussy and rude and mean. It is more of a holistic lifestyle. A holistic lifestyle. You know, independence in looking after your wealth, your health, uh, independence uh, and intentional in your relationship with God, in your relationship with other people, intentional with your visions and goals. That is what uh, it means. And I pray God will help all of us today uh, to do more and to be better in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. I mean, that has been a wonderful session. There's been a lot of hmm and deep <laughs> and a lot of people have been taking notes uh, and commenting about it. Uh, we are very grateful. Thank you for that eye-opening session. So um, if you have questions, please start typing them so that I can read them for our guest and she will be answering. So I have some questions here um, already. So um, one thing I wanted to ask is, you know, sometimes people are, are afraid. Sometimes I've had mm -hmm. people tell me, like, I mean, I've tried to do business, but I tried it. And then, like you said, I didn't do well. So I just, I was scared. And then I ran away. So I've, mm -hmm. I've taken myself to not be a business person because I feel like maybe I can't handle <laughs> the pressure and all that yes and i know mm -hmm. i can imagine when you feel when you said you almost threw in the tower i threw in the tower i just left it it was petty business i i sold um you know when there was a time that making jewelry was trendy so i learned how to mm. make hand, hand jewelry and all that i sold it it worked but and I, and then i started to sell human hair and that was just the height of it it was terrible so i stopped that one so i've just um, always wondered people tell me you can't truly succeed being a nine to fiver I'm a nine to fiver, you know, like I want, I work nine to five, not nine to five per se, but that's what they call it. Is it truly, is it, which is it like, there's a better route to being financially successful as an entrepreneur rather than as a nine to fiver? Because sometimes people do that. People make it look like, why are you working for other people? Like it's a crime. And I'm telling you, and I, in my head, I'm thinking, well, everybody needs somebody to work for them. So if I can yeah, build my definitely. up to the point where when you need me to work for you, you're paying me really high, you know, but there's just that conflict. So I want you, if you can just help us, you know, like is there a better path to success okay. being a nine to five or being an entrepreneur? Okay, so I'd say both of them work just fine. I mean, you can build yourself to the point where you become like a consultant. You also yes. like consult for other companies. You, you're you really valuable in your in your field, not just in your company. You're mm -hmm. valuable in that field. So you can build yourself to that level where you just find out that you're working for other people. And that is absolutely fine. I've heard people say that too, that they're not um, they're not cut out for business and all of that. Now, with business, one thing I would advise anybody listening is that you start small. Maybe not small. Mm -hmm. You start sensibly. 
I won't even say small. I'll say you start sensibly. Because you can start big and make it big. You can start big and make it small. I mean, really. But just start sensibly. So, I mean, if it's a field you're not too used to, maybe get a few of those items, try it out, um, um, market it to other people. And really, even in, in doing business, you need the help of other people. For example, some people are horrible at marketing, even though they do their products very well. So you might need to consult somebody that is fantastic with marketing to just help you push the product. It doesn't mean that you are not you are not good at business. It just means that there are parts of business that you don't really know and you 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 might need the help of somebody else or you might need to study about it. I believe that everybody can do business. I'm a businesswoman. I believe everybody can do something extra um, that they do for themselves. Uh, it might be yeah. the, through the use of your skill. Maybe you made, like you said, you made bracelets. It might be as simple as that. There's always that something extra. So, but just start sensibly and don't don't do it big. And then there's a tendency to give up. I don't know how many times I felt like I should give up. I mean, not even once. <laughs> I've just felt like, okay, I think I'm I'm done now. I think I'm done. Who sent me? I'm done. At least I'm not suffering. I should let me just go and get a nice. You get. <laughs> so it does happen. <laughs> It does. It, <laughs> it it happens, but just keep going, yeah. keep going, you know. And then you know, find that um, that thing that you love and that thing that will make sense in that area that you are. I hope that okay. that helps. Thank you very much. Very much it does. And so, just to follow up on this question, you know, <laughs> what you said about I've seen all these funny memes that myself and sometimes my friends pass around. They're like. Some days you feel like I should just be a housewife and sit at home, like this whole working <laughs> thing is not meant for me. <laughs> you know, it can get like even even at the nine to five, and they won't get so crazy that you tell yourself, you know what, I should rather just be yeah. a housewife. And I know you've already, you know, said you've already encouraged us. I uh, we've heard it. And if you're listening, please hear it again. You can do something even while you're at home. I'm going to skip that as a question since you've already referred to it in your teaching. So um, one other thing is, uh, you know, I want to talk about financial discipline now. I will say a story. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I first moved to Lagos, that's when I started my first real job. I had done all these small, small NYSC, post NYSC. Then I was doing my master's, so I did like just part-time jobs. But coming to Lagos, so I we started working properly and i would re it wasn't a lot of pay it was i think i started with um fifty thousand. when i got the job they told me they would be paying me 90. so i was happy and then i got to the company and said oh, i'm sorry no basic is fifty thousand. then you may get um bonus occasionally <laughs> yeah the first bonus they gave me was 5k so it was just it was fifty five. <laughs> it was fifty five thousand <laughs> I um I'm going to come to the main question, but I want you to just since I started with this, give a word of encouragement because some people I found don't like to start small, and even for me then it was difficult. So I want you to give a word of encouragement to you know people about starting small. It's gradually you know you move uh up to on the ladder definitely. Mm -hmm. So if you can just mm -hmm. and then I'll put the rest of the question. Yeah, so definitely it's it's okay to start small. Being starting small doesn't mean that you don't have enough money or you are not good enough. That's why you're trying it. It just means that you you don't want to um, waste resources. You want to grow more. I mean, I I would always say it. I don't know if you've heard me say it, that. I started my business with 50k. I mean, I literally one day went to the market, took my driver, and just when I took off, I don't even really know the market like that. And a friend, and she took me to where they buy flour and stuff and stuff and stuff. And that was it. And to go with glory to where we are right now. So it's okay to start small. There's nothing wrong with starting small. And then even in starting small, there are different things that will help you. Think about the, the different ways you can do stuff. So let's say someone sells um bracelets or whatever you can have a situation where you call young guys around your your neighborhood to say you know what guys you sell one of this stuff you're going to get 150 naira on it mm. you will find people rushing to go and look for anybody that will buy because they know mm. there's something in it for them it's just having the skill to 
to think, having God open your mind to see how else you can do what you are doing and how best it can make profit. That is important. Not that you even started small. You can start small. It's fine to start small. God will always push you up. That's just Amen. the honest truth. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So I'm, just, I'm going to follow up on that question. So where I was actually really going is when you mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, uh, I was talking about oh, financial, sorry, discipline. You know, how to strike a balance. So then when I was working, it wasn't a lot, yeah. But I just felt like, man, I'm stressing myself too hard. So I would always, luckily for me, I wasn't spending a lot on transportation because the house was like five minutes, to, five to 10 minutes walk. And on bike, it was very much less. So it was just bike, basic biking. Um, so I would reward myself. And then I, I would shop on ASOS. ASOS was uh they would they were doing if you buy 20 pounds free delivery to nigeria and that that was pounds was less it was maybe 400 or 450 mm -hmm. then it's not as crazy as basically i'll just you know reward mm -hmm. myself every month 20 pounds on ASOS, and i built that because i felt like i'm working hard i'm you know i was mm -hmm. i was alone i would reward myself and then when i got mm -hmm. married <laughs> when i got married i i my husband would just you know think that you know if you remove monthly basics like you said the needs you don't always have to do that and i was i just mm. thought that i must reward myself working hard is mm. tough i must reward myself so how do you strike a balance between as a working class person rewarding yourself occasionally and and being um and conserving which is one of the great points that you raised as you strike a balance between the occasional reward and then conserving your money okay so um i would say that it's okay to reward yourself as long as the reward does not become a habit <laughs> you know when you are having to reward yourself constantly then you run into some form of addiction so to say I, that's what i'll call it <laughs> so you know you find that over time when you now think about how much you've spent in that reward you realize just how much you've wasted you know that's sometimes true. have you bought something before you really loved it but when you took it home you're like uh, every time <laughs> not so nice. uh -huh. so that's exactly how it feels for me what i do is those rewards i pack them together and put it in an investment. Then mm -hmm. my reward from the investment, I can now use part of it to reward myself. Yeah, nothing feels good like so, receiving our Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I don't I don't necessarily reward I'm fine. I'm even horrible. My husband had to tell me recently, I think you should get new clothes, you know. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with the ones I'm wearing? I would rather go and buy something else than is important to me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you deserve it i mean you work so hard you need to do this yeah. you need to do that okay so but then again it's okay to reward yourself just be reasonable in those rewards you know just be moderate with them don't be crazy about it you can you, you can put those rewards you can even have a habit where you put those rewards into an account you just know that okay this 20 pounds is for me okay, this is my salary, or this is, even though I'm getting a salary, mm -hmm. but this is my salary from my salary. Oh my so God, it's going yeah. into this account. I'm not going to touch it. Nobody touches it, my money. And then after a while, just see how much is there. You'll be amazed as how, how much you've saved and That's what you can true. use that saving to do that would be important for you. Wow. Thank you very much. That has really helped me. So um, I have a question here. Uh, did you, uh, did you came me wants to know, what are the things you should set in place when you want to cross over from a nine to five to being an entrepreneur? First of all, um, and people make this mistake, is to leave your nine to five sham without any plan. <laughs> you just know that you have one idea in mind and you just jump into it and you realize that, oh my God, I'm in the gutter somewhere. <laughs> so it's the first of all plan. I wouldn't say necessarily if you're in a nine to five to jump right out of it into something else plan and um, begin to save towards that thing um have like you know a proper cushion 
before you jump out of your nine to five. Don't just get this great idea to start selling something and then the next day you, you drop your resignation letter. That's not a wise idea. So before you transition into entrepreneurship, if that is what you're looking at doing, then you need to plan properly. You need to consider the costs holistically. So not just the cost of buying um, those things. Consider your living cost as well. Consider everything that it takes to maintain you. And if you have a family that it takes to maintain your family, you need to look at all that before you transition. Alternatively, there is actually nothing wrong with doing a nine to five and also having a side hustle, except it's going to affect your nine to five. Because I also believe that if you are working for someone, you need to give them that time. Yes, you need to give them that time. If you're being paid for a nine to five, then focus on your nine to five, face it. If you have extra time, maybe maybe after you leave work, you can do your own stuff. So it's okay to do that as well. All right, thank you so much. So I guess um, I'm sure your question has been uh, answered. So uh, one last question, and I'm just going to, um, you know, ask about for those who are like, we're talking about independence. Now for people that are in the marriageable age, being independent is one thing that some people may not truly want to be. Why? Because there has been story, there have been stories of how men are scared of the independent woman. <laughs> you know, what would you say to um, ladies who are considering, you know, either being like putting, you know, really hustling to work for themselves, but they are discouraged because I'm sure you've heard it before. There are people that was, there are even parents yeah. that would say, "Why do you need a car?" You don't want them to marry mm. you. Why do you want to buy a house? All those <laughs> kind of things. What would you say, you know, to people who might be in this category? Ugh, okay. So, well, I believe that a man that God has ordained for you that truly loves you will support you. Mm. Now, remember, we said be yeah, being independent doesn't mean that you answer to nobody, you don't listen to anybody. That is not my own definition of being independent. My own definition of being independent is to have that financial stability enough to support yourself, even support your family if you can. But it doesn't it has control? I tell you, sometimes even though I'm making decisions about my company or myself, and even though it's my money that we use, JJ, I will still ask my husband, "Oh, babe, what do you think about this?" Do you think this is right? I mean, should I spend this much on this stuff? You know, it just guides you and it 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 removes unnecessary problems and reef in the home. So being in, independent doesn't mean that you now have no, you just go. Uh, if there's any argument or any fight, you're like, uh, should we have your money? I have mine. Uh, everybody can just go their separate ways. What are we doing here? This one, that yeah, one. Do you know why? Uh, <laughs> that is not what it is. <laughs> That is not what it is. But really, a man that God has ordained for you, that cares about you, will support you. Mm -hmm. And in a situation where, because I've also had women, and I know of women that maybe for one reason or the other, they're not, they want to do a certain career or, or launch out in a certain business that would take their time a lot. So they have an agreement with their spouse to say, okay, babe, for the next two, three, or four, five, six, ten years, um let's do this you know so that the children are growing and and um um you know there's mommy around or whatever it is yeah. i gave my story somewhere i'm not sure if it was in lsc that um i would have actually been on a nine to five job mm -hmm. but when i you know i realized that the distance number one and what was required of me for that job because it was a very professional job and it was one that would really take my time it would probably even take me to travel and do all sorts and knowing that my husband travels a lot it would be right. really weird for me to also travel a lot and the children literally they won't even know us that that's what mm -hmm. it means so i had to make that decision it wasn't that it was dumped on me or anything, but I just had to make that decision to say, I would rather do something that was more flexible for me as a person, that was more flexible for um, my family, that would see along me that family time. So it is possible to be independent and be married. In fact, you should be independent when you're married, darling, but you just, um, you, just you know, kind of um, also respect and submit to your husband 
That's that's what okay. he means. But now for for young unmarried women, because they actually the ones who suffer it the most. If I'm successful, so my husband's good as well. For young unmarried women, do you advise like should should they um hide their wealth or how, how do I place it like, express it though? Like be be conservative or some, something like that. Because like for instance, I had a friend, she's from a rich home. When she first came to Lagos from I think the UK, she she couldn't she shouldn't even be working in the company I was working, you know. My boss like but she just did because she wanted to, you know, be cool. And then her mom just rented one small apartment for them. While they ha had a house in Ikoi because her mom didn't want her to chase away men or well, prospective <laughs> women by that amount of wealth. <laughs> so it's actually for the for the unmarried people I'm saying, like should should they as a young okay. woman who's successful, uh, should I refuse to do some jobs or just conserve, hide the true state of my wealth to save face? No, from, from no I wouldn't people. say hide. I wouldn't say hide, but I would say don't rub it in the face of others. Not even a man now, mm -hmm. Seth. But, you know, there's a way that someone that is wealthy would act. And there's a way that another yeah. person that is wealthy would act. And they'll be like, oh, that one is rude. This one, even though he has, you've heard that before. It'll be, mm -hmm. Even this man that has something. Like, he doesn't even loudy. This one will just come, drive, bang, bang, bang. Everybody, get, 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 get. Everything's just scattered. You get so don't don't rub it in the face of other people. Um, I know some men have that insecurity, that yeah. low self-esteem. That's what I call it, where they're like, ah, this woman has a lot of things. But usually, when a man complains about what a woman has, it's probably that maybe something is not adding up. Maybe she too, she has her own that she's using to taunt him, you know. So mm -hmm. maybe in conversations or in discussions, yeah. she's like. You know, you know, I have a better house. This is your house that I'm even <laughs> managing to come and visit you in. I've seen you don't even appreciate my. Pre so it's like, oh, ah, okay. okay, okay. So, but usually, sometimes that happens where the woman is constantly rubbing it in. At other times, those men just have problems, and mm -hmm. you know, they don't mm -hmm. want a woman that is more successful than them. But there's nothing wrong in you being successful. You don't need to hide your wealth for anybody. Nobody's now saying, I mean, how, how do you even hide wealth? How do you now expose wealth? <laughs> I don't even, like, think they confuse someone. So, but, like, just don't, you know, it's not like you, you, you be in a meeting with, your, with the man and you'd be like, do you know I have, like, five billion naira in my account? And I have, like, ten Range Rovers at, my, at the back of my house or, you know. Do you understand? So it's yeah. not really... <laughs> It's in conversations. This thing comes up in conversation. It comes up when, um, you know, they see they see you. Some people don't even have to, you know, make the effort to show it. You know, it's in conversations. It's in what they see, how they perceive you. But I don't think that any woman should hide any wealth. Just be yourself and be generally nice to everybody. Be cautious to everyone. And yeah, yeah. that man that God has ordained for you will show up. It's just the truth. He would accept yeah. that wealth. He knows that you're wealthy. He doesn't want to rub it in your face or make you look like, you know, you are bossy or anything. It's just jealous. That's the truth. That's true. Thank you so much. We have uh, extended our time now. I really, we really appreciate you. I'm sure you can see. I don't know if you can see the comments pouring in, but, you know, there's a lot of thank oh, no, you. I thank can't. You. Uh, okay, let me try to show some of them. Okay, I think that our guest has been has somehow gone out of the studio. Well, now it's it's a uh, time. I'm sure she's she has like um some other place. We did say four to five. Okay, she's back now. Sorry, the, sorry, I don't know people. what I did. Oh, <laughs> no problem. I'm sorry. All right, so there's just a lot of thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me. I'm trying to show them. But we're already way past time now, so let me just allow you, uh, please lead us in closing prayer, and then we can disperse for today. Yes. Okay. All, the All right. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we just want to thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've allowed us to share today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your fullness. Thank you, Lord, for 
the lives of everybody listening to us right now be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we ask that the grace to be everything that you have called us to be, to be sound financially, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, we pray that you will give unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. For anyone listening that might be struggling with poverty in any area of their lives, oh God, we pray that you raise them up and you raise them out of it in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that you begin to give everybody clarity of purpose, clarity of vision, that the grace to plan more, to spend wiser, that you give unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end of everything, oh God, let our lives always glorify you. For it's Amen. in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you very Amen. much. Thank, Thank you for, you this for having me. Us. God bless you. God bless you, my lady. Have a wonderful Amen. evening. You too. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, everyone. Thank you for staying tuned up until now god bless you i'm sure you'll be blessed if you joined us late don't worry i'm going to drop the notes i judged a lot from what she said so pick the very important things i mean they're all important make sure that you you know pick something and that you learn saving conserving uh don't spend all your money and invest investing is very important some people have even said investment is what takes you out of poverty not even just the savings you can save maybe you spend it one day but when you invest it doubles so and whatever you do be kind thank you for joining i'm going to um close the session now because it's two minutes past the uh, five o'clock and don't forget to join us tomorrow we're going to uh, be talking about the praying woman now if you were with us when we started we've discussed this i'm sure before we we talked about you know the essentials of being a praying woman and so tomorrow it will continue and we have a wonderful guest who will be joining us that is uh mrs adela obayemi um I'm sure some of you will know her already but if you don't tomorrow will be um seeing her profile and knowing more about her she's sound she's a child of god and we will be seeing why it's important for us to build up our prayer life from right now that we're single uh so that and so not all of us are single basically just building up our prayer life and so i'll see you tomorrow thank you for joining today have a wonderful evening bye-bye well i'm going to leave you with a song the song i was playing when i started which is Arubo Jo by minister ken enjoy <laughs>